and on behalf of the Commission and the Division Office, I certainly thank you all for joining in this rally, commemorating the signing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, 50 years ago this very day. Several organi organizations collaborated to plan this rally, including, and if you're here, just raise your hand, the ACLU of Delaware, the Delaware Barristers Association, Metropolitan Wilmington Urban League, NAACP, and most importantly, Kids for Christ Camp at Zion Mount Carmel Church. However, this unity reality is for everyone, every individual, every child, every person. And we think it's appropriate to start this rally by taking you on a little journey of history and remembering some of the profound injustices that led to the enactment of the Civil Rights Act. From 1980s to into the 1960s, a majority of American states enforced segregation through what was called Jim Crow, so-called after a black character in minstrel shows. Under the force of these laws, many states and cities across the nation could impose legal punishment on people for mixing with members of another race. The most common types of laws forbade marrying a person of another race and ordered businesses, owners, and public institutions to keep their black and white clientele separated. One notable court cause that arose from the laws was Plessy versus Ferguson, heard by the United States Supreme Court in 1896. In that case, a little known shoemaker by the name of Homer Plessy decided to challenge the Louisiana Separate Car Act, an act that required separate train cars for white and black passengers. The U.S. Supreme Court decided that as long as a separate facilities for blacks and whites were equal, hence separate but equal, that law did not violate the Constitution. In the years that ensued, the United States Civil Rights Movement challenged Jim Crow laws in the courts based on facilities not being equal. That is, until 1954, with a landmark United States Supreme Court case, Brown v. Board of Education. In Brown, 13 children sued the Board of Education for Topeka, Kansas, calling for the school district to reverse its policy of maintaining separate elementary schools for black and white children. The Kansas District Court ruled in favor of the Board of Education, but the children appealed. When the case made it before the United States Supreme Court, it was combined with four other cases, one of which was a case that originated right here in Delaware, Gebhardt v. Belton, in which the Delaware Supreme Court held that it was unlawful to have segregation in Delaware school systems. In deciding Brown, Attorney Thurgood Marshall, who later became a United States Supreme Court Justice, argued that separate facilities were inherently unequal. The United States Supreme Court agreed with Mr. Marshall and unanimously ruled that racial segregation in public schools was unconstitutional. Following the Brown decision, many activists risked their lives seeking to expose the harshness of racial law and order. It was only after years of highly publicized civil rights demonstrations, marches, and violence that the nation's political leaders realized that they could no longer ignore segregation. But not everyone welcomed change. In 1963, Alabama Governor George Wallace vowed to defend segregation now segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. On June 11, 1963, 
Governor Wallace personally blocked the entrance of a building to one of the University of Alabama's buildings to prevent two black students from enrolling at the school. That same day, June 11, 1963, President John F. Kennedy addressed the nation, saying in part, it ought to be possible for American consumers of any color to receive equal service in places of public accommodation, such as hotels and restaurants and theaters and retail stores without being forced to resort to demonstration in the street. I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. But I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am America. In August 1963, more than 200,000 Americans of all races celebrated the centennial of the Emancipation of Proclamation by joining the March of Washington for Jobs and Freedom. In the fall of 1963, President John F. Kennedy proposed the initial Civil Rights Act. It did not pass. November 24, 1963, President Kennedy was assassinated and Lyndon B. Johnson rose to presidency. President Johnson used his connections with Southern white congressional leaders and the outpouring of emotion after the assassination of and the past the Civil Rights Act as to honor President Kennedy. 
in signing the Civil Rights Bill of, on January 2nd, 1964, President Lyndon Baines Johnson said in his remarks, Americans of every race and color have died in battle to protect our freedom. Americans of every, Americans of every race and color have worked to build a, na a nation of riding opportunities. Now, our generation of Americans has been called on to continue the unending search for justice within our own borders. We believe that all men are created equal, yet many are denied equal treatment. We believe that all men have certain unalienable rights, yet many Americans do not enjoy these rights. vestiges of injustice in our beloved country. Let us hasten that day when our unmeasured strength and our unbounded spirit will be free to do the great works ordained for this nation by the just and wise God who is the father of us all. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 signed into law January, July 2nd, 1964 outlaw discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. It made illegal voter registration requirements like poll taxes and literary taxes, literacy taxes and racial segregation in schools, places of employment, and public accommodations. Phoebe. Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou died recently, poet laureate. She actually was named Marguerite Annie Johnson and she was born on April the 4th. And if you all remember, April the 4th in 1968 was the day that Dr. King was murdered. And she was one of his closest friends. She wrote this poem called Still I Rise. A lot of times we read poetry and really we don't know what it means. But if you think about it, there is a ground, there is dirt, there is earth. When it is unsettled and the wind comes, the dust rises and then the dust settles. So it's sort of like the civil rights against oppression. Actually, this was the 1964 civil rights was probably about the third civil rights uh, act. Uh, that is in our Constitution. But Maya Angelou wrote this, you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very day, dirt but still like dust I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got all wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it kind of hard. 
because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. As I said earlier, Rosa sat, Martin marched, Obama ran, and now we all must rise. At this time, we want to present some of the proclamations from our uh, elected officials. First proclamation coming from Congressman Carney, and it reads as such. Thank you for inviting me to participate in a Human Relations Commission's event marking the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act. This legislation was a clear example of what could be accomplished in our nation with strong leadership toward an important cause. It ushered an era of change for the nation and brought millions of Americans closer to equality, a fight to continue each day. One of the real privileges I had as a member of Congress is the opportunity to get to know Representative John Lewis and join him in the 2012 on the annual civil rights pilgrimage to Atlanta. Representative Lewis is a civil rights icon and a wonderful saint-like person. Yet, 50 years ago, he was beaten, bloody, and experienced hatred all across the country as a leader of the civil rights movement. The thing that most impressed me about Representative Lewis is that notwithstanding his experience as a young man, he has an incredible optimism and belief in the ideas of America. Today's event should not only be a celebration of the progress made in the past, but a reminder of the attitude and promise that Representative Lewis and others carry to this day and that should inspire our actions as we, as we address the challenges we currently face to realize Dr. Dreams, Dr. King's dream. Once again, thank you for inviting me to this historic occasion. I look forward to continue to working with all of you to move our state and nation closer to equality for all. Sincerely, John C. Carney, Jr., United States Representative. City Council. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. I ask my council colleagues to come and join me at this time. I also want to recognize our state treasurer, the Honorable Chip Flowers, that's here with us today. I want to thank him for being here. I want to thank my council colleagues as they help me in presenting this resolution today. Uh, Councilwoman Hanifa Shabazz, Councilwoman Sherry Dorsey Walker, and Councilman Nandi Chikwocha. This resolution is sponsored by the President of City Council, the Alpins K. Gregory, and all of Council. And it reads, whereas the passage of the Civil Rights Act 188 years following the adoption of the Declaration of Independence and 99 years after the end of the Civil War, was a major step forward for America in supporting the creed that all men are created equal. And whereas in 1964, the Civil Rights Act passage was another important milestone in protecting the individual rights of people of color and legally ending discrimination and segregation in America. 
the Civil Rights Act still remains one of the most important pieces of legislation instituted, not only for people of color or different nations of origin, but for each and every American, regardless of gender or socioeconomic status or their religious background and Whereas Wilmington City Council is ever mindful of those trailblazers who led and participated in the civil rights protests and set-ins at lunch counters, who refused to give up their seat on the bus because of the color of their skin, who were imprisoned, their homes burned, and yes, who lost their lives because they believed in the dream of equality. And whereas Though 50 years have passed, we as elected officials, as business owners, as church officials, as civic organizations, and as individuals must still fight to ensure that the Civil Rights Act strength is not weakened and made null and void. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Wilmington that Wilmington City Council joins Delaware's elected officials, the citizens of Wilmington, the state of Delaware, and our great nation to commemorate the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and other such legislation that has been enacted to uphold that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thank you. I want to thank all of my council colleagues. Uh, as we commemorate the 50 years of the Civil Rights Act, we also want to recognize that these colleagues, these council people that are standing before you also supported legislation this past January that reinstituted Wilmington Civil Rights Commission. So I want to thank my council colleagues for that as well. Thank you for having us. Our mayor was here earlier, but had uh, another commitment, but he certainly left his proclamation, which reads as follows. Whereas 2014 marks the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson on July 2nd, 1964, to protect Americans' rights to vote and to prohibit discrimination. And whereas the Civil Rights Act of 1964 transformed our nation's understanding of justice, equality and democracy and advanced our long journey toward a more equal and fair union. And whereas this historic legis legislation helped bring an end to the Jim Crow era by banning discrimination in public places, prohibiting employment dis discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin, and leading to the integration of schools. And whereas our nation is profoundly better because of the many decades of sacrifices made by countless Americans who bravely fought against discrimination with the hope that one day achieve freedom and equality for future generations. And whereas as we commemorate the 50th anniversary of this landmark achievement, we all must renew our commitment to continue our fight for justice, equality, and building a nation that is more free and fair for all. Now, therefore, I, Dennis P. Williams, Mayor of the City of Wilmington, do hereby proclaim January 2nd, 2014, as the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and ask all citizens to celebrate the legacy of this historic legislation and observe this day with programs, ceremonies, and activities that celebrate this accomplishment and advance civil rights together. Signed, Dennis P. Williams, Mayor. Good afternoon. I am Christopher Bullock, President of Newcastle County Council. On behalf of all our council members, we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Whereas on July 2nd, 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed into law the landmark 
Civil Rights Act. And whereas the Civil Rights Act of 1964 outlawed state-sanctioned segregation and prohibited discrimination in hotels, motels, restaurants, theaters, and other public accommodations. It is also authorized at that time to terminate all federal funds from programs that practice discrimination and created the EEOC. And whereas the act was called for by President John F. Kennedy in his civil rights speech in 1963, and was taken up by President Johnson. And whereas the momentous law was the outcome of years of tireless activism on the part of the civil rights movement, many who gave their blood, sweat, and tears, that resulted in fair treatment regardless of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Now therefore, be it resolved, by and for the County Council of Newcastle County. The County Council hereby commemorates the 50th anniversary of the passage of the landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964. And we support all efforts for the future to ensure all citizens in Newcastle County are granted their civil rights. Christopher Allen Bullock, President, Newcastle County Council. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Reverend. As we get ready to close the program, my name is the Reverend Dr. John Moore. I'm the youth pastor of Calvary Baptist Church and also Vice President for Resource Development and Strategic Partnerships. And as we get ready to sing this great anthem that was the song during the Civil Rights Movement, we reflect on the words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who took that song and created a sermon, and that sermon sounds like this. There's a little song that we sing in our movement down in the South. I don't know if you've heard it, but it has become the theme song. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. Though I join hands so often with students and others behind jail bars singing it, we shall overcome. Sometimes we've had tears in our eyes when we join together to sing it, but we still decided to sing it, we shall overcome. And oh, before the victory is won, some will have to get thrown in jail some more, but we shall overcome. Don't worry about us before the victory is won, some of us will lose jobs, but we shall overcome. And before the victory is won, even some will have to face physical death. But if physical death is the price that some must pay to free their children from a permanent psychological death, then nothing shall be more redemptive. We shall overcome. Before the victory is won, some will be misunderstood and called bad names and dismissed as rebel rousers and agitators but we shall overcome and I'll tell you why we shall overcome because the arc of the moral universe is long but it bends towards justice we shall overcome because Carlisle is right no lie can live forever we shall overcome because William Cullen Bryant is right truth crushed the earth will rise again we shall overcome because James Russell Lowell is right truth forever on the scaffold wrong forever on the throne yet that scaffold sways a future and behind the dim unknown standeth god within the shadow keeping watch above his own we shall overcome because the bible is right you shall reap what you sow we shall overcome deep in my heart i do believe we shall overcome and with this faith we will go out and adjourn the councils of despair and bring new light into the dark chambers of pessimism. And we will be able to rise from the fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of hope. And this will be a great America. We will be the participants in making it so. And so as I leave you this evening, I say, walk together chilling, 
Don't you get weary? There's a great chat meeting in the promised land. We shall overcome. We will overcome. For we have overcome on this day. God bless you. Now as we stand around, let us all stand if we can and reflect on the words of that great song that's still so relevant today, We Shall Overcome. Now start, and everybody join in with me. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Join hands. Overcome. I do believe we shall now let's sing this stanza we shall all be free we shall all be free we shall all be free in my heart. Oh, one more stanza, we shall overcome. Let's just repeat that last stanza one more time as we walk from this place. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Sing it like you mean it, my brothers and sisters. Someday is today. That's right. Oh, deep in my heart, I do Say today. Today. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise out here in this blessed place.